Uh, thank you to Patrick Hunt, the World Association of Basketball Coaches, and to uh, Steve Smith from Fever Oceania for inviting me here to do the clinic today. Um, I just want to talk about something that's really in vogue with modern offensive basketball, and that's just some concepts and principles of the dribble penetration game. Uh, I, I think that's the the ostensible reason for, for doing the clinic, but there's also a topic within a topic. And I want to get into the progressive steps that a learner will have. And certainly as coaches, we need to have a good empathy with uh, the steps that these players will go through to understand what we try to teach them. But I also want to try and hopefully give you a good example of a methodology that the, the coach may employ to make you more effective when you're delivering your message. Too often we take some of these things for granted. Our players will turn up to training. And we have our coaching plan. We put the skills out there with varied results. But there's a lot going on in the minds of these players that we have to be able to effectively engage with to get our message across in the uh, most effective way. I, normally think of a four-stage process for any of these players. And the first thing that we have to be, or we can never assume, is that they know or they can learn how to learn. If they can learn how to learn, then they can learn how to train, then they can learn how to play, and ultimately they can learn how to compete. And each phase must build on the next phase, and then every day our job coaching is never to assume that one phase will take three months or three years, and once that's done, we can move to the next phase. So pretty much every day, we have to teach them to, or remind them to learn how to learn, learn how to train, learn how to play, learn how to compete. And it's very common, and I do a lot of work with juniors and a lot of work with junior coaches. The coach's message technically may be very, very good, but as Ron Barassi would say, it's not what you say, it's what they hear that makes the difference. And oftentimes we can get one of our young players, if you could come out, your name? Sophie. Sophie. And I could be demonstrating any part of the game, the topic is irrelevant, and trying to uh, make Sophie a better player. And some common interactions with her may be, I'm discussing something with Sophie and her eyes are this way. So while we're talking, the lack of eye contact uh, is disturbing because I'm not engaging the player. There's something else going on. Another very common one is the body language where someone's turning away. We all get that as coaches. Or worse still, that you're trying to tell a player something and they're walking off or walking away. And with all the junior coaches that I work with, I get them to interrupt that process as quickly as they possibly can. So to gauge how we can be effective and help this player learn to learn an appropriate amount of eye contact, good body language between the, the coach and the learning player, and certainly not someone who's walking away from you, are all examples of things of how I can gauge my effectiveness and the effectiveness of the coaches that I work with. So learning to learn is something that we, we never want to take for granted. Uh, and then certainly learning to train is an issue that we have with all our, our teams because we may have teams that simply can't get things done at a game like intensity or they take far too long to set up between drills. They convert very slowly from one drill to the next, um, and so on. So learning to train is an incredibly important part. And I think that those things, you'd be well served to address those as coaches before you think about the actual delivery of your offense or delivery of your defense. So they're the steps that they have to go through the steps that I have to go through and how I can create a, a good methodology. You know, I, I think about three things. I have to show them what I want, 
I have to tell them what I want. And the third thing is, they have to show and tell me. So I show them, I tell them. And those things can happen in unison and often get repeated, repeated, repeated in many cycles. We go on and on and on. And then I have to be able to gauge the effectiveness of that by having them show and tell me. And I'm going to do a couple of little things here with, with, the, with the players to um, give you an idea of what I mean. So, girls, if you could come down underneath the basket. And this is just an example. It could be anything related to the game, offense, defense, situations. But we're going to work on some footwork, some dribble penetration skills, build up to a team method. So I want all the players to begin under the basket. I want you to self-spin the ball out to the three-point line. When you spin it out, I want you to jump stop with your back to the basket. So I'm assuming we've got a level of proficiency which will give them a jump stop. From here, I want you to reverse pivot on your left foot to face the basket. And I want you to rip, drive the ball down the middle, hopefully one bounce, and do a right-hand layup. So there's a significant amount of teaching that's going to take place with that, but I want the players to do a demonstration. So I've given them a, a fairly poor, uh, I've shown them what I've wanted, I've told them what, they've, what I've wanted, let's see the players demonstrate it. You're up first, Sophie. Self-spin, jump stop, reverse pivot, all right, well done. Now you go to the end of the line. Next player will go. Continue through. going. Okay, and freeze there. Now, to make that better, in time I'll progress to the next phase of um, instruction with it. So I'll tell my players, when we catch the ball, I want you to drop your stance lower, which will help us get more explosive. Second point is I want you to rip the ball from your ear down in front of, you, of your, uh, your boot laces, which will prime you like a spring to drive the ball to the basket. The third thing is I want your first step being long and low. So there's a lot of instruction right there. Uh, who can give me the second point that I spoke about? Yeah, terrific. All right, so we've got a really good answer that we want to rip the ball from our ear through our boot laces and through to the basket. So um, having them repeat back to you is a pretty good way to see are they getting your message. All right, so let's do, see if we can cover those three points. First one being we want to catch the ball a lot lower in our stance. Off you go. Quickly through. Ripping the ball from your ear to boot laces and through. One hard dribble and on the ring. Okay. So even though, ball here, I'm a lot older than you, when I catch the ball, I can still go from my ear, where the ball is now, to boot lace, boot lace, which you can see gets my knees quite bent here, rip, and long and low. First step, my chest is over my knee, the ball's going to the floor, and I'm on my way to the ring. So let's drop our stance down, make it a little more dynamic. Catch, rip. 
Good. Long and low. Rip. Start the ball beside your ear. Boot lace to boot lace. Good. Good. One more each. Ball at your ear. All right, let's see if we can physically touch our, scrape our boot lace with the ball. Ear, boot lace, boot lace. Very good. Best example yet. All right. Okay, now because we've got a sport that's so, uh, so important to have equal facility with feet and hands, both sides of our body, I want you to do a mirror image of that. We jump stop, we'll reverse pivot on our right foot and rip here. Now the ball is ear, boot lace, boot lace, left hand, long and low on your first dribble and get to the ring. Off you go. Rip. Try and shoot left hand layup. See if we can go a little lower onto your boot laces. All right, continue through one more time. Good. Sophie, can you grab the boys for me? Tell them to come back. Good. Okay. Now, boys, you join in under the basket. Now, one way that we can have the, the players show and tell me that they're learning what we're trying to do is have them instruct each other a little bit. So the girls, I want you to provide a good model first. I want you to use your left foot as your pivot foot and we have a right hand layup. A strong rip. And boys, we'll see if you can follow their model and do exactly the same thing. All right, off you go. Move through, off you go, quickly. And go to the end of the line. Off you go, first guy up. Now, uh, Girls, while the boys are doing this, you can give them some feedback on their execution of the skill as they come to the end of the line. So boys, when, go to the end of the girls' line here, and you can give them some feedback about what they're doing. Yeah, yeah while we're on the move here, you can help your teammates. All right, I don't want to do every bit of coaching that we have when we have a session. So I find that if, if I can get my players to instruct the other players, that's particularly powerful. So when we go through this time, sorry, ear to boot lace to boot lace. Okay, so let's show me one more. Off you go. So boys, what we're after are three points of contact. Get the ball to your ear, scrape it on one boot lace, scrape it on the other. Get long and low. Good. 
Very good. Very good. Good. Continue through. See how you going? Good. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, the rest I want to do is to move through it pretty much uh, warp speed here. And uh, these X's are a little bit of a guide for something that we'll do. So I want you to do exactly the same thing. Give me a three step layup pattern. So when we sweep the ball through, it's on our left pivot foot here. We're going to see if we can closely get to the right, left, right on our pattern and do the same thing. Just one time through with the girls. Off you go. Put your feet as closely on the X's as you can. Left, right, left. Left, right, left. You got it. Good. Well done. Good. Good. Oh. Oh, okay. Had to think about it a little bit there. Okay. Now once we've got that layer at a pretty good level, we can start to introduce some advanced things and something that's... Uh, I think got a real significance to help our players develop as one-on-one -on -one players is something called a Euro step, which is our same layup footwork made really popular by uh, Manu Ginobili for the, for the Spurs in Argentina. And it's a way of using the same footwork but to deal with the second line of the defense. So I want us to keep our same pattern of left-right-left left footwork and when we rip through and we are left, our second step is a little more lateral to the right and our last step is a big push over to go through the sp or split the help side defense and we'll shoot more of a teardrop or a, or a set shot on our layup. So off you go, see if you can do that. Very good. You can still shoot the ball right hand. Catch and rip, long and low. Good. Oh, okay. Excellent. Very good. Good. That's okay. What's going through your head with that? Good. All right, okay. Now, while we're building the dribble penetration ability of these players here, we're going to start uh, working our way towards a team concept. So give me three of the boys now. I want one ball with a boy here at the wing, one player at the top, one player at the opposite wing. And the new three-point line is pretty perfect for spacing. So since we used to say play about one step outside the previous three-point line, I think this line's a great tool to get very appropriate spacing for our offense. And it's also a rebalancing line. So when a player makes a cut, you want to get back outside the, the line again. Okay. When the ball goes to floor with one player, all bets are off with whatever planned movement we had in the offense. Flex, shuffle, motion, it doesn't matter because an entirely new set of principles come into play 
As soon as this player takes one dribble with the ball, and five players have to learn to work in unison. So if we have one dribble where the ball gets pushed to the player's right hand, we quickly want this player to be able to slide over two to three metres to the right, and this player to work on a chain and slide two, three metres to the right as well. And now we want quick delivery of the ball from here, pass, and pass to deal with the rotation of the defence where they've had to help off this player. When that pass is made, help from here to here, and we end with the open shot in the corner. Now, because the players aren't warm, I want you to be able to step in to a, about a free throw range and shoot your shot. So let's begin with the ball over there. Now, building on what we've done before, we need this player to make a hard one dribble rip to the middle. The same footwork what we did before. Instead of continuing for the layup, however, it's here, pass, pass quickly. We slide off, we shoot the ball. Off you go, rip, rip. All right, terrific. Now, I want you to rotate around, move from this line to that line, get your own rebound. Next player come in, you'll go to the end of the line. Next player come in with the ball. So you'll go to the end of the line. Well, you, you can show me here. All right, so you ready to rip? Rip, kick it, kick it, and shot. Own rebound, next player in. Now you can just bring your ball in, it's good. All right, now we don't want to, uh, we don't want to lose our one and -on one move. So there won't be help unless our drive can be game-like. So I tell the kids in the Australian team, you have to drive with the intensity like you want to dunk the ball. So our rip and hard one dribble has to be into the seam to draw the help and get the kick. Off you go. Here, I'm going to slide off the X. Oops, start right on the X and slide. Good, next line in. And we'll tend to pick an element, coaches, that we'll work on each day. The delivery of the pass, the shooter's hands and feet being in the correct position. But it's a constant rule that we want to have. When the wing player penetrates to the middle, we have to move on the chain. Okay, now moving ahead quickly. Just come back to here for me. It's a ball over here. Fill the top, fill the wing. Now if we get a situation where the wing player rips and drives to the baseline, we want to be able to punish the regular rotation in the defence. So if the players, you could just move down a little bit so the coaches can see. The regular rotation in the defence would be for a player to come off the low eye or the, the low player in the split line to help against the, the drive and then usually to start to rotate somebody down. So we want this player to be able to slide down to the baseline to give an effective uh, escape clause in case you can't get to the ring. And the other thing that's very, very important is that you read the dribble penetration and you're able to provide a safety valve by going behind the ball. Now, it, it just drives me crazy with a lot of our junior basketball that this player will drive and make a bad shot or take a bad shot or get an offensive foul. And with proper dribble penetration rules, this player should have the ability to stop, make this pass or pivot and go back to a safety valve. All right, so off we go, just start it out here. Once again, all bets are off when the ball goes to floor, whatever offense we're running. All right, go, rip it. Okay, very good. Now, I just want you to rotate a spot. I'll just keep the same three boys here for demonstrators because I know I haven't got much time. Now, a hard rip, and I want you to see if you can throw the ball with your left hand, so it's great left hand skill development and hit our player on the baseline. Go, rip it. All right, terrific, just rotate a spot this way. Rip. Good, rotate. 
Five minutes? Okay. Now, this time, we'll come to a two foot stop. Two foot stop, we'll reverse turn, pass the ball back to our safety valve player, and they'll have the shot. Go. One more. And make this drive hard. Go, 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 go. Okay, terrific. Now set up again. Give me one player in the post. So we'll generally start with three players out. You can start with four players out. But adding a post player in now, and how I explain to the post players is just have your hands as indicators. So if the dribbler drives with their right hand, good, think where your right hand is. So if they drive right hand, you have to slide to your right hand. Come back again. If they drive left hand, you have to slide up to the elbow towards your left hand. All your rules remain the same. So what I want you to do is rip the ball hard to the middle on one drive and you can either pass to the postman or you can continue the perimeter passing. Your decision. Ready? Go. Rip. Alright, very good. Come back again. Now make a different decision. Fill this X here. Good, good spacing. Alright, now give me one example where you drive left hand. Ready to go again? Okay. So, where was the position we needed to have filled? Baseline. Terrific. So, baseline drive, and we need a baseline drift, don't we? So, let's go one more of those. Okay, give me a second post player in. Give me two low posts. Now just face the ball, both post players. If the one dribble goes to the right hand, show me how you would move. All right. Now this is a very subtle and important move to make. If this player is dribble penetrating with their right hand, I like to keep our rule consistent and say to this post player, we want you to move towards your right hand which may take you in a position underneath the basket and around to this side here. And you can see what we hopefully do is to open up a, a massive driving lane for this player to be able to drive the ball or if the post defense stays to help, you've got a dish off pass to here. So let's go back. And I want you to drive middle. Off you go, rip it through. Good, now I want you to hit one of the post players when you drive middle, either or. We have to move quickly. Go, go, cover floor spots. Very good. Now show me one drive to the baseline and where the posts would move, as well as the perimeter players. Okay. So right there we've got uh, terrific movement that's that's great at all levels of basketball. Under 12s on up, the principles are really strong. As soon as one bounce goes to the floor, we've got coordinated movement by all five players. Now just show me one where the ball gets ripped to the baseline. Uh, to the, yeah, baseline. Move. Right, freeze. With all your coaching, we have to have an if-then mentality. So what if this happens, then what? So we've done a great job to move to our floor spots. Hopefully we've counted a strong rotation by the defense. But if we don't have a shot, then what happens next? And so we have to be able to give a player an idea about uh, rebalancing, for example, to the three-point line. So it may be our rules are that when you pass the ball, you have to get through to the other side. Or if you see two or three players on that side, you may come back to the same side corner. We may tell the post player, if you're high, you automatically have to find your spot low. So from here, 
the post player with the ball. Reverse the ball to that side. And now we may tell him to rebalance the floor quickly, slide low, fill to the next X, fill up, and we play again or whatever our offense may dictate. Okay, put the ball in the middle. Now the last part, I want to get some movement in our offense. So you post up on the ball side, throw the ball to the wing, cut to the ring, cut to the ring, fill from the weak side, fill out to the open spot, reverse the ball, reverse the ball, and from here, I want you, good cut, from here I want you to make a strong dribble penetration to either side, and then we make the appropriate moves on dribble penetration. So start up the top, ready, pass the ball, pass, cut, and fill, and reverse the ball, and cut, cut, and fill, and dribble penetration, and move to four spots. Okay, where did you need to move? To the right, All right, show me one more. Now I want to pass, cut, and fill uh, two good reversals, so I'll con I want, want it to continue. Pass the ball, cut, cut the score, fill, shape up, post, look for the ball, cut, fill, one more pass, Good, pass it, cut, cut, fill, reverse the ball, penetrate, penetrate, movement. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. freeze, freeze. What's your movement? Safety valve. Okay, you'd, you'd get to there. So, very quickly with uh, just dribble penetration moves, adding some basic movement which will uh, get the defense on rotation early, and then having every player very well versed in where they've got to go on one bounce, we can have a very effective offense put together very quickly. And I think that that's a great way to build skill development for our young players. Uh, as I said at the start of the clinic, building our empathy in terms of educating them on learning how to learn and learning how to train are the necessary steps first. And your job as the coach is to show and tell and then have them show and tell you and provide your appropriate feedback. So um, hopefully that gives you some, uh, some food for thought. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.